Randy Sexton ready to go. Randy Sexton on the line with the instigators here. Assistant General Manager of the Buffalo Sabres and the General Manager of the Rochester Americans. We have questions about both. We welcome him in. Morning, Randy. How are you today? Great, guys. How's everybody today? Oh, it's hot, which is nice. Uh, healthy, which is nice. And you're Razor Page, you're nice. The other two guys are. You're not? No. Listen, I bring the ability to get the heat out of them. <laughs> I'm what some That's people tight. would refer to as the igniter switch. Maybe they should oh, change yeah. the name of your show to the igniters. <laughs> That's not a, not a bad idea. It's got a nice uh, sound to it. It's got a nice little ring to it. Uh, Randy Sexton joining us online. How are you doing? How's everything going in this confusing time? I mean, how's life? Uh, okay, great, thanks. You know, um, great. It's um, I'm riding around along with everybody else, you know, trying to make the adjustments to everyday life to, to stay safe and keep my family safe and healthy, and and uh, working away. It's it's you know our our business, as you guys well know, it's it's a people business, and you're accustomed to interacting face to face with many many people every day. So that's been quite a change, but you know, a challenge nonetheless, and something. We uh, only have two choices. You can either feel sorry for yourself and whine about it, or you can get up and get at, get at it. So we've we've chosen the latter. But you so guys look, in your look, business, Eric, Randy, you guys are still business as usual. You're just not face-to-face -face doing it, right? Because there's so many things you got to get done. Oh, no, absolutely, yeah. I, absolutely. We are, we're very, very busy. I, I think, you know, because it's, it's that time of year, and we're all kind of wired to – you know, uh, June being, you know, kind of maybe a little bit of playoff hockey left, but that's it. But we're, we're actually more active and, and busier now than we have been in the past um, because of the time that we've been allotted. And so, but it is, you spend all day on the phone rather than, you know, face to face with people, but certainly lots to do and lots going on. So who, who have you, like, do you, are you regularly in contact with, players, Amherst players, prospects, or are you just kind of letting everybody have their space? No, we, we, we have an organizational uh, plan set up between coaches, management, player development people to reach out to our players across the organization from, from the Sabres through to the kids in college and junior to make sure that we're staying in touch with them, provide any support and assistance they or their family might need. You know, um, in my case, I, I reach out to our players every couple of weeks. Um, haven't gotten to the prospects yet, but you know, certainly the Rochester players have done the done the exit meetings, but also keeping in touch on a, a kind of every 10 to 14 days just to make sure everything's okay. And, you know, oftentimes, particularly in times like these, um, people assume uh, no news and no contact as bad news, and we we want to be sure that that's not the case, so trying to be proactive on, on our end right across the organization. Assistant General Manager of the Buffalo Sabres, Randy Sexton, joining us uh, right now. Um, some news came out about Lawrence Pilot. I don't know, you know how much you want to comment on that, but um, I don't know if you were surprised, but I think the question now is, you know, you move past that. Who, are, who in your mind are guys that, that are going to benefit from his exit? <sighs> Well, I, I was a little surprised uh, because we had been in regular dialogue with Lawrence and things seemed to be on track, but uh, obviously he made a decision that he felt was in his best interest. So uh, w wish him all the very best there in, in uh, Chelyabinsk. And, uh, but, you know, really we're, we're excited about our young D Corps that we've got throughout the organization. You know, just in Rochester last year, we saw Jacob Bryson take a significant step forward in his rookie season. He was named Rookie of the Year uh, for the Amherst, uh, particularly in the second half of the season, had really started to assert himself as a as a legitimate and, in fact, a power play option for us. Uh, his, his overall game continued to grow, and I think in talking to him in his exit meeting, he, you know, he was a fairly typical... First year pro, you know, had had good 
deep self-confidence. Uh, he's, he's ridiculously humble, so he didn't want to step on anybody's toes, but he wanted to kind of find his niche, and he, he did that very well. And then in the second half, uh, kind of been around the league for a little bit, and really, really started to blossom. I think we... Um, Morgan? Well, Sorry. Morgan, yeah. No, 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 no go no, ahead, go ahead. Morgan? Yeah, uh, well, with, with Will, Will Borgen, you know, Will's trajectory is, is, is headed to the top right again, which is great. Uh, more positive steps forward for Will in his overall play. Uh, he has really, really embraced the whole, you know, hard to play against, miserable guy that when other teams look down the bench and they see him coming out, they're like, oh, no, I got to go play against Borgen. And he's really embraced that. Uh, his skating has improved, his puck play has improved, and we're wrapping that all up into a good size, mobile, puck-moving, physical defenseman. So uh, he doesn't generate a lot of offense, although I think he's got the capability to do more. So he doesn't get a lot of accolades for that. But in terms of his overall play and his style of play, we're, we're very excited about it. Randy, when you're, when you're talking about, you know, the two players that you had mentioned in Jacob Bryson, Will Borgen, um, you know, on the Sabres currently right now, they have six NHL defensemen now with, uh, you know, Bogosian uh, moving on, Scandella being traded and, and Lawrence Pilot leaving. It opens up an opportunity for, for somebody in this organization, uh, possibly uh, from Rochester. Do you feel that one of those guys has the ability to, to make the jump to the NHL next year? I do. I, I think both of them are going to be right there. You know, I mean, you guys have seen it over the years. You have to have a good camp. Uh, and, and, and the preface to a good camp is to have a tremendous offseason and you know, we've been in touch with those guys to make sure that they're doing their workouts. Um, they both have started to skate a little bit now, which which is fine. Uh, they're they're diligent in the gym, so we do believe. <clears throat> excuse me, we do believe they all they all put in the time and have the type of off season needed to put themselves in that position for good camp. Sometimes it's an injury, you know. Sometimes. Um, it's just great play that gives them the opportunity. But but I really do believe if they stay healthy and have good summers that they are both going to be very difficult to uh, to reassign to Rochester at the end of uh, training camp in the preseason. Who was that, Riff? Sorry, I was reading something. I had a qu- question here from someone. Who was that you were talking about? Well, we're talking about Jacob Bryson and Will Morgan oh, okay. as two players that, you know, have the opportunity. I'm, I'm certainly still interested in a Matias Samuelson. I know that he's very young. He's only 20 years old coming out of, uh, what is it, Western Michigan. Um, you know, it'll yeah. be interesting to see if one of these guys can really step up in training camp this year and, and take a position. Randy Saxon joining the end. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Just the delay there. Sorry, I wasn't no, sure if... Sorry, no, no, no. Go ahead. What were you, what were you going to say to Craig? Um, Matthias Samuelson, I mean, he's not far behind. I mean, obviously, this will be his first year pro. And we've seen, you know, we've seen that many times with kids who turn pro who are really good junior college players. Uh, they need, unless they're truly superstars, they need time in the American League. Uh, you know, Matias' father played a long time in the American League and the National Hockey League. So he comes with that kind of bloodline and understanding of what it takes to play in the NHL, and we fully expect when he gets to camp that he'll have a, a strong camp, a solid camp. But we have to keep things in perspective. It will be his first NHL camp. He is only 20 years old, plays a very difficult position. So, you know, we're anxious to see him in camp and how he does. And what, he'll be given every opportunity to, to make the jump. But if he's not um, ready, he'll obviously – move into uh, Rochester as one of our, our top four guys and we'll begin the process of honing his game to get ready to play on a full-time basis in Buffalo. Uh, I, I think uh, another player um, in Rochester that is, that is talked about a lot is Casey Middlestad. He becomes a free agent at the end of this season, or he's now a restricted free agent. Can you make sense of the 10.2C um, restriction in his, in his contract and what that means to, for people listening? Uh, I, I'm not sure what you're referencing. 
Well, his his uh, he's a restricted free agent, but it says ten point two C, and I, I'm not I'm not sure what that means if that's due to his uh, that he signed a, a a contract out of college. But I guess I guess the question in there isn't necessarily about his contract; it's more about his his uh, is he waiver uh, exempt next year, or is he a player that when he resigns will have to pass through waivers if if Buffalo decided to to put him back in the minors? Uh, he, he will be uh, waiver exempt. Um, he will be waiver exempt. So if, if that's if that's what you're referencing, yes. Um, you know, we we have every expectation that we're we'll be resigning Casey Heat. I think he made ter- terrific progress in terms of his overall game, uh, which was really what needed the work when he uh, went to Rochester. In his first meeting with Chris Taylor in Rochester, he said, "Tails." What do I need to do to become an everyday NHL player? So they talked about it. And, you know, Casey deserves a lot of credit because he came to Rochester with an open mind and a great attitude. And uh, Tails said, you know, you've got these five, six, seven things to work on, Casey. And you know what? You could be here all year. Like, it really just depends on your willingness to get to work and your willingness to embrace what we need to work on uh, with you. And he said, I, I don't care how long I'm here, I'm going to put in the work to get my game back to where it needs to be and where it has to be to be an everyday NHL player. And that's what he did. Uh, for those of you who had an opportunity to see him play in Rochester, early on, you know, he was making the adjustment to being defensively responsible, all the details, whether right side of the puck, always facing the puck, you know, the, the smart plays that, uh, that defensively responsible pros make. And that, that took a bit of time. You know, it, it, it didn't come right away. It didn't come right away. He's used to having the puck on a stick all the time. And, uh, you know, at the pro level, you don't always have that. But then what we saw in the latter games was he had, he had woven that defensive responsibility into his game. And then once his confidence came back, we started to see the quality of puck play and offensive generation that we saw when he was so so dynamic at the World Juniors of the year they were in Buffalo. So... Long-winded answer, Casey made great strides, um, but uh, he is and does not require waivers to, to go to Rochester if for some reason that's where he ends up at the start of the year. I, I love that you mentioned that because that was something that was, I'm sure, Riv is a, de- a defenseman, but it, it, it goes for every player about always facing the puck and things like that, little details that that are that a lot of a lot of people don't, quite recognize when they're watching a game you know like there are there are those little idiosyncrasies that that players need to to work on and improve on and i i I, you never hear that you never hear coaches or managers talk about that because it's it's almost like it's almost like that's between players and coaches and not because it's secret but it's because it's not it's not the uh the sexy topic it's not it's not they don't feel like that's going to be the end result that puts the puck in the net um Joining us on the line here, Randy Sexton, uh, Assistant General Manager of the Buffalo Sabres, General Manager of the Rochester Americans. Let's ask you about the draft coming up. Sabres could potentially be six, seven, eight, maybe even higher, but let's say they stay at six, seven area. Um, how's the draft this year? I mean, a lot, a lot was said about last year's draft class, um, and now I'm, I've, hear, I've heard a lot of, about this draft class being a strong draft class. Where, where is this draft class compared to last year? Well, this this draft class is is an excellent draft class, no doubt. Uh, obviously, some very high end players, but also good depth, um, good depth. And if you know, I, I would say, if you're picking anywhere in the top ten, you're going to get a very very good player. Um, depending where you pick, the player might be able to step into the NHL next year. I think there's probably a couple of players that are would be physically ready to do it. Um, whether they're mentally ready to do it remains to be seen, but would have the physical um, uh, capability to at least start the season there. So, you know, we, there's a, a good slew of forwards in that top 10, 12, 15, and um, not as many defensemen, but some very good defensemen. So, you know, we're we're bullish on the player that we're going to get, obviously, We'll know on the 26th um, or where we're going to be picking, which will allow us to focus a little bit more. But um, 
we've been through we've been through our preparations have been done for a few weeks now and are ready to go but uh the depth and the depth and strength of the draft class is is a very good one, particularly at the higher end, and we're we're going to get a very good player. And this player is from uh, what country? Just trying to get, just trying to narrow it down. You don't have to tell us, obviously. Just trying to, <laughs> well, just try, hey, just hey, trying to see if it slip. Oh, oh, he's a Swede. He's a Swede. We almost had him there, Pete. I thought I, I think he was like. Uh, I don't know if I should answer that. I could narrow it. No, that's all right. You didn't. You don't have to. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect you to answer that. Uh, we know it's Jake Sanderson. Great um, Canadian kid. No. Great American kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. You can rule them out. What's that? I said there are not too many Slovenians in the top of the city, so you can rule that country out. Okay. <laughs> well, listen, Randy Sexton, uh, kind enough to join us, and uh, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate it, and uh, we look forward to hopefully seeing hockey back soon, whether it's on uh, this side of the summer or the other. Let's hope, guys. Stay safe and healthy. Thanks again.